So let's talk about Gaussian elimination. First of all, in the previous lecture, we talked about the augmented matrix of a system of n equations and n unknowns. That is, a matrix of the following form, where we stack the coefficients of the system in the first n columns and then the vector b in the last column. In other words, we're augmenting one column onto the matrix A. This matrix is termed the augmented matrix. Okay. Now, Gaussian elimination performs row operations on this augmented matrix until the portion corresponding to the coefficient matrix is reduced to an upper triangular form. Now, first of all, what are the row operations which we discussed in the previous lecture? The three operations that we're allowed to do in any order whatsoever is that we can interchange two rows, multiply a row by a non-zero scalar, and last but not least, you're allowed to scale and add two rows and insert the outcome in one of those two rows. So Gaussian elimination is based on a sequence of row operations until you obtain a row equivalent matrix that is upper triangular. So what is an upper triangular matrix? We say that a square matrix U, U4 upper, is upper triangular if the elements of Uij are such that Uij is Aij for i less than or equal to j and 0 if i is strictly greater than j. That is to say everything below the diagonal of the matrix is set to zero and everything above could be or not be zero. Okay. In other words, if you're looking at a upper triangular matrix, it should look something like this. So as you can see, everything below the diagonal components are zero and everything above could or could not is allowed, doesn't have to be zero. So Gaussian elimination will start by a certain augmented matrix, perform row operations, a sequence of row operations, until you obtain an upper triangular matrix over here. Let's call the entry C, so C1, C12, down to C1n, as such. So as you can see, this is what Gaussian elimination aims to do. You perform row operations on the original augmented matrix such that you achieve a form that looks like this an upper triangular matrix right here and some coefficients in the last column. One can easily see that dealing with the upper triangular form is way easier than the original form. Why is that? That you can perform back solving. That is, you start by the last equation, you solve for xn by simply noting that xn is bn prime over cnn, plug it back in the row just before it and solve for xn minus 1 in a similar manner and up till you reach x1. It's way easier to solve it. That is if we write down the system corresponding to the upper triangular form we're going to get this. So this is what we have and we start solving bottom till top. That is the last equation has only one unknown. The one before it has two unknowns all the way top so you get n unknowns. So the last equation gives us xn is bn prime over cnn, right? The one before it gives us xn minus 1 is bn minus 1 prime minus cn minus 1 n xn over cn minus 1 n minus 1. And we know everything. We know the c and the b's. The xn, we plug in the value we just computed over here. We plug it back here to get xn minus 1. So at this instance, we know xn and we know xn minus 1. Each time you solve a system, you're going to use all the variables you just computed. So if I go one equation up, I'm going to have xn minus 2, xn minus 1, and xn. I'll solve for xn minus 2 in terms of xn minus 1 and xn, which I already computed. Going back up. Now, in general, you're going to get that any xi is equal to bi prime minus the sum where j goes from i plus 1 till n. Why i plus 1? As mentioned, we're going to use all the variables that come after xi. So at xn minus 1, I used xn, right? So everything after this index. cij, xj over cii. Okay? So this is how 
the Gaussian elimination procedure operates, we start with matrix A, so this is matrix A, the augmented matrix, and produce matrix B in upper triangular form. Let's say this is B over here. If A is the augmented matrix of a system of linear equations, then applying back substitution to B determines the solution to the system. So solving backwards or back substitution, we could determine the solution of the system as such. Now it is also possible that there is no solution to the system and the row reduction procedure will make this evident. So the question is now, okay, I, I have an upper triangular form and I could solve the system by applying back substitution as we showed here in the system, right? The question now is, what is the procedure that allows me to go from A to B? From a normal augmented system to an upper triangular form. Well, there's a procedure you could follow. You can use any procedure that you want, uh, given that you ar arrive at B, but there's a, there's a procedure to it. And what is this procedure? You start with element A11, given that it is not zero, and if it is zero, then find any row such that its first element is not zero, to exchange it with row one. We need to have that the starting element here is not zero. Why? Because we're going to have to divide A11 by the elements that are below it. And how do we do that? For example, the second row, you can divide A21 and then multiply by A11, right? The third row, same thing, and so on. So, if I show you one example, R2, you could plug in side R2, 1 over or A11 divided by A21 times R2, right? And what happens with the first entry becomes A11 and the rest I just don't care, right? Same thing, R3, A11 over A31 times R3. Now you see why we need A11? To be a non-zero because if it were zero then you're making everything zero then all this becomes zero that's not what we need if you do that all the way down to rn you have a11 over a n1 times rn and then once you have an a11 here all the way here you just you know you subtract r1 right why is this allowed because we're allowed to scale and add two rows, okay? So that's what we're doing. We're scaling and adding two rows and inserting it in one of those two rows. After those n minus one elementary row operations, you're going to get an augmented matrix that looks like this. So the first row is untouched. The second row starts with zero. Actually, any row starts with zero and all the other elements are modified so here i've got an a22 prime down to a2n prime here i've got an a3 2 prime down to a3n prime here i've got an an2 prime down to ann prime what we have here is also modified so b2 prime b3 prime and a bn prime right now you perform the same process of elimination by using a22 prime so this guy right here now you look at at this augmented matrix and apply the same procedure as we did you grab a22 prime you try to null or zero out a32 prime down to an2 prime so that you get something with all zeros here you continue doing this until you reach the upper triangular form. So eventually you will reach B. Let's do a quick example on that. So imagine I've got this system called S. I start by formulating the augmented matrix as such. So let's try to obtain an upper triangular form. We start by grabbing A11. Since it is not zero, I'm good to go. So Let's start by nulling this guy out and then this guy out. So we'll, we'll start by nulling 2. What do we do? Instead of R2, we're going to insert R2 minus 2R1. So that this guy is 0. 
what do we get? Row 1 and row 3 are the same, right? So 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 times 1 is minus 1. 1 minus 2 times minus 1 is 3. And 0 minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, right? Then you continue to do the same thing for row 3. Try to null this guy out. So for that we need to do R3. We replace it by R3 minus times minus R1. That is R3 plus R1. So we get first two rows are the same. So minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 2 plus 1 is 3. Notice that we still have one element to null out, which is minus 1. Now, since all the elements below 1 are 0, we take a look at this matrix over here. And we repeat the same procedure. Now let's apply one more row elementary operation. That is, instead of R3, we're going to place 3 minus R2. So the first two rows are the same. And the last row becomes 0 minus 0 remains 0. Now if this guy happens to be a non-zero, means you did something wrong. This should always remain zero, okay? Once you null something out, it should stay zero. And that's how we reach the upper triangular form. So minus one minus minus one is zero. Two minus three is minus one. And three minus minus two is five. So now we could do back substitution to solve for x1, x2, x3 or to be more correct, x3, then x2, then x1. If you want, you could rewrite the system, but this is unnecessary, just for you to see what's going on. So the system corresponding to the upper triangular form is the following, x1 plus x2 minus x3 is 1. Then you have a minus x2 plus 3x3 is minus 2. Then minus x3 is Five, right so from the last equation we start from the last equation we get that x3 is minus 5 we solve for x3 then go to the second equation you get x2 is 3x3 plus 2 that is 3 into minus 5 plus 2 which is minus 15 plus 2 that is minus 13 so that's what x2 is finally x1 is 1 minus x2 plus x3 that is 1 minus minus 13 minus 5 that is 1 plus 13 minus 5 that is 9 right so the solution to this system is simply x1 x2 x3 is equal to 9 minus 13 and minus 5 and by one of the remarks that we gave previously both namely the S system and the upper triangular system here, call it U, have the same solution. So what we solved for here is indeed the solution over here. And if you don't believe me, you can go and plug in the values and check that x1, x2, x3 satisfy the S system. Okay? So we did a lot of stuff in this lecture. We talked about the Gaussian elimination. That is, to proceed with the Gaussian elimination, you have to create the augmented matrix and perform row operations that reduce the coefficient matrix to upper triangular form as you see here in matrix B right the solution to the upper triangular system is the same as the solution to the original linear system solving the upper triangular system is much easier why you can just perform back substitution as you see right here or as we did in the example over here we started with x3, then solve for x2, then in the end we solve for x1. You can only proceed by doing this as long as the element at position nn that are on the 
diagonal entries are not zero. If one of them is zero, you have to find some sort of exchanging. The unknown xn is immediately available using the last row of the augmented matrix. Now using xn in the equation represented by row n minus one, we find xn minus one. This is the back substitution approach and so forth until you reach x1 and there's no row on top of x1 so you stop. Now if position nn is zero, then the entire last row of the coefficient matrix will be zero. What happens when we get a row that is all zeros? I'm going to leave this thing for the next lecture. Okay, so over here we didn't see any row that is all zeros, right? For that, we'll talk about in the next lecture and I'll see you then.